So this uh, first poem is called Driving to Switzerland. It's about driving to Switzerland with my family on the summer holiday. There's just some uh, names of some French towns um, that occur near the French border um, later on in the poem. Driving to Switzerland. The night before, my father would lay out on his side of the bed wallet, camera, maps, francs, wash bag and passports, meticulous as an assassin. Downstairs, my mother hissed at the kitchen floor. At five the next morning, her hand wobbled on your shoulder and we sleepwalked through clothes to the car. Breakfast was cornflakes on the beach at Dover and grit in marmalade sandwiches. And there'd be a photograph. Nobody spoke. On the ferry, you could want to die. We'd huddle on deck with thermos and anoraks while my father unfurled a map deploying us like tent pegs in a ground sheet. We churned an unrelenting wake of Englishness. France was always too hot and lunch was horseflies and sunburn. Once we parked next to the metro. Speaking through my mother at the gendarmerie, my father didn't flinch when he listed as the contents of his suitcase 12 ties. It was the maps he missed. You woke next morning to scooters in alleyways and women in slippers and dressing gown staggering under baguettes. Coffee. A man cursing his car. This could be Dijon, Lyon or Besançon. We slept badly because the pillows were like rocks. Then that last leg through Pontalier and the hills. The highest big town in Europe, boys. The clouds like a lake in the valley. Finally, a door opened and a new accent would start. My mother ceased translating. The welcome we had walked into flew straight over our heads. Thank you very much. This, is a, uh, this poem is an homage to the great, uh, another great figure, the great short story writer and poet Raymond Carver, who I'm a big fan of. And there's just one reference in this poem to the, another short story writer called Isaac Babel. Um, the poem is called Ray. The first book of Rays I bought was Fires in Northwood. For two weeks, I got up early, reading chunks in the bookshop, loving his no-nonsense tone, the way such simple words could take your breath away. Writers sometimes need to stand and gape at this or that thing, a sunset or an old shoe, in simple joy. It is hardly new to say Ray's poems are plain, but it was this, in Babel's words, which pierced my heart like a full stop placed precisely. This was the first time I'd seen writerly behavior made flesh, hanging cards with quotes above the desk, borrowing from everyday events and speech, a wrong number dialed at midnight, for example. His account of watching laundrette drums spin kids' clothes one Saturday in Iowa gripped me. He knew there and then, he says, that nothing would shape his life like they. This cut through me when I had kids myself. One storm-racked night in Penzance, I drove ink-wet streets to quiet my son saw the gale abate and knew I'd have to keep things brief. I turned to fires most often as one does a favourite pair of jeans or coffee brand, sometimes in homage and for instruction. The first time I finished it, I knew life 
had turned suddenly, as his best friend says. Nothing, it seemed, would ever be the same. Thanks very much. Thank you.